everyone. Welcome to Level Up with Lilith again. Today's guest is one of my favorite people I've met. Um, we met a couple years ago where I interviewed him for an award that he ended up winning. Uh, and the, the reason it's so memorable is because he interviewed me more than I interviewed him for the award that he was nominated for. So I'd like to introduce you to Anthony Chow, the CEO of Newegg. Uh, if you don't know what Newegg is, it's a, it's a technology exchange, and I'll let him explain all of that, but it's a publicly traded, great company, um, lots of employees. They've made so many different uh, innovative products and ideas out there, and I'm just super excited for you all to learn from him. So, Anthony, thank you so much for coming to my podcast, uh, and I know you're busy. I, we just learned that you've been traveling, and, and you still made time to come see me, so thank you so much. Thank you, Lilith. Hi. Thank you so much. Yeah. So um, this is going to be a little different than most of my podcasts because I, I love learning from you and the journey that you've had. So I'd like you to take us back, like Newegg before uh, when it was co-founded by you as well. And you took a, a break and then you came back and then you went public. Like, I want to know that whole journey if you'd like to tell us, please. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's uh, you know, got to recall back like back to like 20 23 years ago you know at the time like uh, at the year 2000 where new uh, started the business uh, actually on 2001 and the time you know the um, e-commerce bubble and we were having a computer business quite a bit and we thought doing the uh, e-commerce online for selling computer is a great idea so we came up with the idea, we started that. But during the time, you know, the uh, computer business is so competitive. Um, there are so many of the uh, computer retailers that they build a computer, the price war, things like that. So we end up that, uh, I personally end up that has started another business of mine, which is on the uh, cell phone accessories. But in the meantime, we are also interested on doing the uh, online business. Mm -hmm. While doing that for a few years, we're doing well. My business is doing good, which is my own business on the cell phone accessory. So I left from the New Age, but New Age is uh, continuing to grow. Because my business is doing good, I have to be a uh, real focus on my business. So I left that. And back to like, like a six year after then I left, I went back again to continue because we see a China is one of the big grill, big, big opportunity. Okay. So I can bring new to China. This is where I end up to stay in China for almost 10 years and then come back here again. So this is a little bit long story of a back and forth. And then I joined um, in, in, in China, I spent a new year business, uh, which is great. Unfortunately in China, you know, the market landscape is really a different way of doing business. Uh, there are many uh, mentality are different, uh, such as like the shareholders think that uh, you have to spend our own money to do business. But in China, it's very different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of investor you know see the booming business. Basically, uh, they are not so care about a bit of positive. The mentality in China, in U.S., where we started the business, we are so focused on the profitable That's of right. the business. <laughs> That's what gets the company sold, right? The exactly. <laughs> so the, the, the different mentality left that, you know what, we don't have so much of chance to grow the business by using our own money to uh, develop the business. So with that say, uh, I, I don't see that opportunity if we are not leveraging the uh, investor funding. So I left again from New York, and I joined a company called Auto Group, which is mm -hmm. based in Germany. And they like to expand the business in China. So at that time, I took the post as a CEO of Auto Group for China. It was great. And then we brought a lot of uh, products to China, and we continued to do that. That really gave me a l big experience of what we call a global e-commerce experience. Uh, and also we we'll call the uh, cross-border e-commerce. So I'm back and forth to China, to Germany, and uh, all parts of the Europe uh, area and bring the product to China and do a lot of cross-border business. Mm -hmm. It was a, was a great, 
great experience that I have. So China, Europe, and U.S. with all this e-commerce experience really enriched my experience in the retail and e-commerce. You know, uh, uh, gave me a very very uh, rich experience in this. Yeah. yeah. So when you came back the last time, uh, you took the company public. Was it all of the experiences that you've been gathering all this time? Yes, um, I came back like eight years after. After eight years, I left Newegg in China. Uh, when I came back, actually, uh, I see the opportunity also for Newegg because Newegg has been doing uh, business for computer selling computer online, and. I think this is one of the great opportunities for Nia to go public. So 2019, when I joined back uh, on the uh, very last quarter, I decided, hey, you know what? You know, company has to go public in order to get more funding to expand its business because uh, there are a lot of opportunity. Nia has a great foundations on uh, building the uh, e-commerce ecosystem, but I felt that we are really not using uh, the uh, resources of the ecosystem to expand its business in a different area. For example, automation of the logistic, uh, social media platform that we right. can expand. There's so much of the opportunity we can expand, but we need resources such as the funding to do that. So I decided when I joined back, the first thing I need to do is, hey, you know what, I need to bring the company to public. And then we did it on NASDAQ. That's amazing. I love it. So, I mean, it's taking a company public must be challenging, right? So you've got to put together the right team, start the audits pretty early, and all these things. Like, how did you have a team with you? How much of your involvement was necessary to be able to do the process? Yeah, it, it's, it's not easy. Uh, it's doable. Uh, the way I do it, I, I think... Honestly, I, I'm not the, the uh, capital person, capital market person. <laughs> so I think it's, it's more like uh, if you want to do something more than anything else, your objective, your, 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 your will, and your hard work, your focus really drive you there. Uh, do I have a great team? Yes, I think a team uh, is so important uh, from finance, from uh, legal, That's right. um, you know, from any aspect of the team that uh, really, really work together. I feel grateful about as uh, New York always have a great team. Uh, you know, my team, uh, you know, people working in New York, they've been uh, so dedicated, so passionate about the work. And this is something that I'm so lucky to join, the, you know, back to company that the uh, culture of the uh, uh People working in the New York are still very passionate about their work, really want to get something done. As far as you get the direction correctly, I think uh, the synergy is there, the passion is there, and the way want to make the things work is there. So this is all about, yeah. I like that. How, how do you think, how would you describe the company before public and after public? I know there's, your role is obviously a little different, right? You have to, like, answer to, like, investors and the public and all these things and lots of meetings, I'm assuming. Uh, how was it for your team, though? Like, you know, they went from a private company, probably more flexibility to public scrutinized company. I can't imagine that's an easy adjustment for, for the Yeah, guys. yeah. We, we've been a private company for almost, like, 20 years Right. And then for the last three, four years, the company became public, uh, different. Uh, the differences was like, hey, you know what? Anything that we do, anything that we have, especially on the financial side, we have to disclose 100%, you know, based on the SEN as that rule. Uh, right. Anything to do with the regulatory, we have a quarter, you know, we are a foreign father. We don't need to do file for the quarter, but you know, yet we still uh, do a 6K filing for the quarterly report. Uh, at least uh, semi-annual filing is necessary. So all kind of this work is something extra. This is more like technicality. 
uh, in terms of the uh, uh, operational wise, uh, anything that we uh, alliance with the vendors, our upstream, uh, you know, we have to expose our credit, our cash flow, our finance. Uh, this is uh, very, very uh, uh, normal for a public company. In terms of the uh, working environment, uh, confidentiality for the MMPI, you know, mm -hmm. non-public uh, information, you know, those kind of practice, we need a lot of training inside among the executive uh, so that we'll make sure that uh, there's no uh, anything that we not, you know, step on the right line that we do. So those, those things uh, need a lot of practice at the beginning. Uh, I was a little bit... Uh, thinking that, hey, you know what, this is something that we never done before for the past 20 years. So that we spent a lot of time having our lawyer, external counsel to help us to make sure that we practice uh, you know, the way how we, 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 we are in the uh, public company. Uh, I think other than that, anything else, if, you know, eventually, it's essentially is the business itself. We got to work hard because <laughs> You know, it's not only work for yourself. The public eyes is there. There are a lot of, you know, fiduciary duty of that course. we need to apply and comply. Scary word. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but obviously, like, you have the exchange where you have the sellers of the products that are selling through Newegg. Um, and, you know, you have on the retail side, you have consumers buying it, right? You also build products. From Newegg, correct? You're building. Uh, we we don't build products. Uh, our product a lot is uh, focused on the technology products. Right. The tier one product, for example, like Intel products, uh, anything to do with the NVIDIA chipset, you know, graphics card, those kind of products, computers, you know, a gaming. main board, gaming right. system, things like that. We do build system, but the product is sourcing from uh, different manufacturers. We we'll put them together. That's something that we built, but we don't make the products, uh, you know, from from zero to one. You know, our position is more like a platform, uh, as an e-commerce online. Right. So, platform that uh, work in between the uh, supplier from our upstream. And then we deliver the product from a supplier to a consumer hands, which is to the consumers. And majority of business, more than 90% is in the United States. So we're very focused on the North America market here. Uh, so with that say, our job, our mission is uh, to build great relations with our vendors to deliver their best product in the meantime, to provide the uh, best customer experience where we are product to the consumer's hands. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've uh, owned a few technical products from Newegg as well. Thank and you. Everybody <laughs> that, yeah, and everybody that yeah. I know that's a gamer, they know Newegg. Yeah. They, know they yeah. have the gaming computers and yeah. all of this. So what other products sell really well with you guys? Yeah, we, we still very focus on computer components. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, up to today, we still have a lot of consumers buy the product from us and put them together. A lot of gamers, a lot of what we call the DIYers, right. you know, they uh, buy the products. And I'd like to thank you to audience. Our audience already bought the product from us. Thank you so much. We did study a little bit from our big data. You know, I'm so proud when you look at the data. We have a second generation of our consumers. Nice. If we look at the data, I think it's more than 20, 25 percent of our second generations of the uh, consumers, which father and son, or <laughs> you know, <laughs> buy from us. So you're creating family bonding at the same that time. That is true. That is very true. The uh, it just uh, deliver the message and loyalty of the customers, right. and the customer, the repeating buyers, that they still love us. You know. And our job is continue to provide the cus best customer experience and make sure that customer are happy and stick with us. And this is our job. Yeah, yeah. well, it's clearly working. You guys are doing so good. Thank so congratulations. you. Congratulations. Yeah.
Um, enough about Nguyen. No, no, I'm just kidding. Tell me about your um, your leadership style. Yeah, I, I'm, I view myself as a very processy person, very execution person, very because organized. I believe in that. You know, there. What I believe is, uh, you know, everybody has a goal. Everybody, we can put a matrix on how you're gonna achieve the goal. Numbers, numbers, you know, how we want to reach a GMV, what is the gross margin, all this matrix. But at the end of the day, I spend a lot of time during the meeting and meeting with uh, my team, talk about the process. Um, a lot of time we can, we, we, can, we can success, you know, it could be because of environment. Or maybe we fail because of the environment or maybe because. But I think a lot of time when you do some tasks, I believe that, you know, if you look at the detailed process, sometimes we are out of control. If we are out of control, what are the resources and support that we can provide as a top management? Mm -hmm. I think this is a key, uh, I believe. Uh, you can view that as a detail and a little bit more micro, but I think uh, at the end of the day, to support the team to success, I think it's, it's my job. It's most of the uh, top management job. So I lead my team, any director and above, together to have a meeting once a while and look at the detail. And the meeting atmosphere has to be encouraging. The meeting atmosphere has to be very supportive. In the meantime, Whoever doing the job, they they always at the end of the day, at the end of the meeting, the the message had to be sent to them that hey, you know what, I have the supporting, and they know what I'm doing. Uh, you know those kind of management they always want to embed in my in my team in yeah. my company. It's it's um not easy to build th that those types of team members, especially executive team members. But once you do, and I've seen yours, you know I've. I've interacted with some of your team and I see not only the respect they have and the vision that they have with you, uh, but also that they have the freedom to actually come up with ideas and brainstorm. And, and that's just fascinating to see, especially in this day and age, right? We've yeah. talked about, yeah. like, we haven't talked about this yet, but there's uh, AI has come out. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's just, it's been out for a long time, but it's just been a big hype, right? And so as a technology company, publicly traded, you have to pioneer some of that. So how did those conversations happen in your team members with AI? Yeah, I think AI is a very important uh, for, for our business, I think for many other, other companies as well. Uh, the, we implement some of the AI already since last year, uh, especially when the chat GPT or this open AI, you know, come up. Uh, we still conceive a lot large number of the uh, MIS team within New Age. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about like, uh, let's say we have more than a thousand our employees, we have almost a 40% of our employees are MIS team. With that say, the uh, chat GPT, auto coding, yeah. really save a lot of big deal for us because uh, before you had to manually coding all the, you know, all, all kind of language, but you know, with the uh, AI, uh, we, we have an AI team specifically when we want to do any programming and all this become like uh, automated, uh, you know, using this artificial intelligence to do that. And that's from the uh, back end uh, development point of view. But from the front end, I keep talking about customer experience. We did uh, implement the uh, AI have the uh, users, when they shop our website, uh, all they need to like put a few words, hey, I want a computer that used for my graphic design, but I only want to spend like a uh, few hours, things like that, put some keyword, and then we're able to generate the components together. Wow. And these are the uh, options. If you want to further talk about, hey, I want the price range between this <laughs> and this, we are able to uh, go filter back and let them choose the computer they can build by themselves, or we can build them, build it for them. 
So those kind of the uh, experience is one of the examples that we use as well uh, to uh, facilitate and help consumer to shop easier to shop and uh, understand what the product they want. Uh, before we have a, a lot of search engine marketing, right. type the keywords, the keyword, right. the product show that. We do analytics, yeah. export the data, yeah. and figure out what you're gonna do next. Exactly. So right now it's a very uh, more like providing the whole solution for the co consumer and more convenient for them to use. Yeah, and make them come back. Yeah. Third generation. Absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Okay. So um, with whatever you can share, and yeah. feel free not to share everything, but what does New Egg look like in five years? I'm hoping that, uh, you know, we still remain the uh, position. Um, there's no change. Keep great relationship with our vendors, our suppliers. You know, put always put the top, you know, priority to have the uh, best customer experience. This is the uh, core, there's no change. But surrounding this, you know, the uh, e-commerce uh, environment change. For example, you know, traditional e-commerce nowadays become a very social media right. and very peer-to-peer -peer type of the uh, e-commerce. So with that say, uh, we'll keep evolving for the next few years, new web going to have a lot of new egg, what we call the media elements in that. A lot of content uh, we're going to build uh, to make consumers feel like, hey, you know what? It's not only shopping, it's more like education as well. Yeah. It's more like a fun to share. Exactly. So those kind of the uh, medias that we use it could be using like YouTube, Instagram, even TikTok. You know those kind of. And uh, you've started those. We I've already started videos, this yeah. team uh, about like two years ago. Mm -hmm. Right now we have very large team to do that. It's not only uh, providing a tool for the consumers or the new generations, shop, you know, fun to shop type of the experience, but we also help our vendors and manufacturers to go through the uh, video type, explain the product, why this product is good, why this product is compatible, and what is the pro and cons of the product with the live streaming interaction with the uh, consumer as well. So we're evolving to bring enough another foot closer between our vendors and our consumer. It's not only new egg ourselves. So this is something we build and it could be built through AI. Mm -hmm. It could be built from uh, any AR or VR type of the new technologies that we're involving with this now. So this are the, uh, the, the direction they were going to. Uh, besides that, I think that I mentioned about the ecosystem of e-commerce. So New Egg launched a car um, the uh, service called a New Egg Partner Service. So we continue to build, we just recently launched uh, automated logistic in one of the warehouse nearby the Ontario, not too far from here, uh, that the robot can bring the product to you and then you can just pick and then just ship. Uh, we launched that two months ago and we feel that very efficient, and that also part of the AI behind that. So we'll continue to build more warehouses. Uh, the more warehouses that we build, the faster the shipping to the right. consumers. So any Zoom tool from UPS <laughs> area from 50 state, so we are going to pinpoint the area they're going to build that so that the consumer buy it today, tomorrow they got the product. So I think this is also part of the uh, customer experience that we are aiming to. I like that. Yeah. So th is the robot the one that hands the UPS guy the product? <laughs> one day, <laughs> why not? You know, using drone, you know, there's a UPS job. But I think at the end, for our fulfillments and dis yeah. dispatch, we can do it more efficiently. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. So we talked a lot about customer experience, and I know you also have the vendor side, the vendor relationships, and, and I know you keep really good relationships, but what keeps them um, 
with Newegg. You know, I know there's other exchanges. We won't name them, but you know, there. How, how? What? What? What do you do to keep them as long term? I think this is like uh, what we call the uh, great cycle of the uh, effect. The if vendor put the greatest and latest product on our platform, consumer is aiming and look on this. If we keep our customers and consumer happy, always aiming to new for the newer product. They always come the back. Yeah, the manufacturer will continue to put the greatest yeah. and product. So this this has we've been doing this like 10, 20 years from now now. And a lot of our manufacturers when they have greatest and latest product, you know, they know that we have a very vertical niche uh, lump sum of these consumers are looking for the greatest and product. So this become a great cycle, you know, bringing the consumer to the vendors. This is what I keep emphasizing putting the uh, another foot closer between our manufacturers or suppliers and our consumers. Those link can to anything that we can share. Of course, we're going to avoid all this privacy. We want to make sure that we comply with that, you know, to to our vendors. And our vendor loves it because the more sharing we uh, to our vendor, for example, like, hey, this product you have, like, 200 reviews, these reviews, what are the pro and con from a big data we are able to analyze and give this data, you know, most of the consumer love this, don't like this, and, uh, you know, this features is better. This kind of uh, information when we share to our vendors, and the more we share to them, the more they like to uh, put the product on our pay our website. I like that. So you're having the consumer drive the quality of the product, and exactly. you're facilitating the conversation yeah. back and forth. So exactly. Gets into exactly. That. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So um, I know you're also a father. <laughs> yes, uh, I am. <laughs> and I know you have hobbies. I do. <laughs> and you're running this big company. So how do you do it all? How do you manage your time? <laughs> how do you sleep? Yeah, yeah well, I, I think uh, when you... Running a business, you know, it doesn't matter big or small. When you dedicate your life to the work and profession, in terms of the time, you really cannot differentiate when it's the time for family and when it's the time for the business. However, I think, uh, you know, at some point, you need to learn how you prioritize and balance your life. What is the time that you need to prioritize for the family and what is the time for the business. I get a lot of calls from from my shareholders or from my management team sometimes on the weekend during my time and that's normal and I say you know what it's okay call me and if I am in the middle of dinner I will ask is that urgent if not I'll call you back I always reply so I think the prioritize of time is, is very important. But in the meantime, you know, when you work, when you want to balance your time, your life, is I think it's also important because <laughs> I myself have a lot of hobbies. <laughs> so for example, I love playing golf and I play golf with my team on the weekend sometimes. Perfect. Um, I think, uh, you know, everybody works so hard in my office and the tension was there. Sometimes playing golf with them, you know, make them relax a little bit, you know, make them like, uh, hey, no, you know, take care of your health as well. And sometimes I also invite them to dinner uh, a lot of time with my family together. Uh, You've I told me once um, that observing somebody while they're playing golf says a lot about them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about yes. that. I think uh, the more you get acquainted, for example, you talk about co golf in, in, this, in this manner, you spend like four or five hours together with the person on the same court. You pretty much can learn that, you know, how he behave or she <laughs> behave, you know. That will, you know, every, every, everything that you do it will reflect how you work as well. So those kind of understanding, you know, you, you, the more you understanding, the more you understand your employees, how they behave, 
the more you can support them to go to be a better to s- make them success. So I think uh, this is I think uh, you know golf is one of the great example. You know, yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, in in terms of golf and other hobbies, I personally think that as you're trying to balance work and life, I think your hobbies are one of the priorities. And the reason I think that is because I feel my most authentic self when I'm immersed in my hobbies and I'm doing something that I've built for myself and I love. Yes. Um, and I, I always make time for it. Yes. And it sounds like you're, you're doing I, I do the same. I, 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 I think, uh, you know, especially when you, when you have a lot of pressure, I think hobby is the key, uh, at least to me, to release your pressure. Uh, like, I love painting. I like to draw. Uh, when you have a quiet time, when you draw something, it doesn't matter if you draw good or bad, but sometimes that kind of the uh, quiet time, enjoy something that you do. When you get back to work, you really like re-energize your you know, energy again to, to back to work. So I think hobby is very important. I always you know, share with some of my folks, my team, I think uh, sometimes we talk about family. I love to talk about family with them. Um, that's my personal point of view. I, I always encourage my kids, my, I have two daughters. There are three things they need to stick together. One is sport, you know, it's for their life. You know. yeah. Stick to one of the sport that you like always. The second is stick to one of the instruments that you like. I, my two daughters, they play oboe. The uh, elder one and the little one, they, she play uh, violin. Sometimes I play together with them. Stick to one of the instruments that you like and also stick to one of the religious that you, you believe in. Uh, that's more like a spiritual. Now, other than profession, everybody do their work. Everybody going to have their family. But I think uh, for their life, what I can guide them and give them direction is you know one music one sport and one and belief religion. yeah I this is it. this is my uh my way <laughs> of, of uh, well it's a okay. good way <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. very yeah. cool so if you were to leave the audience with one advice whether it's business or personal um what would it be i i always think that work to me is so important i never thought about retirement I, I always think that the uh, one word I can give to them is that when we do something, it doesn't matter work or hobby, be passionate with this. That's what my word. Love it. Enjoy it. You know, you everybody gonna see obstacle, everybody gonna hit on the roadblock, everybody enjoy success, but at the end of the day, enjoy the process. You know. I like that. The journey is more fun. Yes. Once you get there it's like okay, you know, everything the fire will burn at some point, right? You know, you you enjoy the end result of what you've worked so hard for. And after a month, it's like, okay, what's next? You yes. know, the process was so much fun yes. that the end result isn't as exciting as it you thought it might be. So. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. So um, I usually end my riddle, uh, my, my podcast with a riddle. Okay. And I wanted to make one relevant somewhat relevant to this conversation you can't answer it online you can answer it later <laughs> once we turn it off so i'm gonna give the riddle i'm gonna close it out okay uh and then you'll you'll answer the riddle but i have to read it so this one okay. this one i actually have to read all right so <laughs> riddle i have keys but do not lock i have space but have no room you can enter but not come in what am i don't answer. So we'll answer later, but I wanted to say thank you so much. I think this was an amazing, amazing conversation. I always enjoy talking to Anthony, and I think and hope that the audience gets um, a little more insight on you as a person, uh, as well as what you've accomplished with Newegg, as well as what your team has done for the company, and, and uh, it's just been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Lilith. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching Level Up with Lilith. Have a great day. Thank you.